Hey, welcome back. My name is Mr. Steve, and this is week two of the Zoo and You story time. Before we talk about today's animal, it's time for us to put on our zookeeper hats. If you don't have a zookeeper hat, you can always just pretend that you have one. So just put on a pretend zookeeper hat. Today's animal, as I'm sure you have seen, is a turtle. Well, actually, it's a tortoise. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to read a story about a tortoise. This is a very famous story. And then we're going to send it out to Lee from Records and Burpees Children's Zoo, and she's going to introduce you to a tortoise that lives on her farm or at her, at her zoo. And then we're going to come back and we're going to do some tortoise activities and then we'll finish off with a craft. I hope you're ready to have some fun. I certainly am. What about you, tortoise? Are you ready to have fun? Oh yeah, I guess so. You ever wonder how a tortoise talks? That's how I imagine the tortoise talks. Like, I guess I would talk like this. What kind of tortoise sound would you make? How would you talk like a tortoise? Do you think tortoises talk like this? I don't think they talk like this. That would be pretty silly if they talk like this. Can you imagine a tortoise talking really fast like this? Because tortoises don't move fast, but imagine if they talk fast, that would be really, 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 really tiring. That's why I imagine that if tortoises could talk, they would talk very slowly. Speaking of tortoises moving slowly, we're going to read a story called The Tortoise and the Hare, otherwise known as the Turtle and the Rabbit. This is an old Aesop story. Aesop wrote a lot of fables. They're stories that had a message in them, like a lesson. And The Tortoise and the Hare is one of the most famous Aesop stories. This particular version that we're going to read is written by Alison Ritchie and illustrated by Nata Noj. And do you know this story? I think you do, and it has a really good lesson in it. Once upon a time, there lived a brash and boastful hare and an old and humble tortoise. Early one morning, the hare announced I am the hare. I am the fastest in the forest. I challenge anyone to beat me in a race. I will race you, said Tortoise. You, said Hare. Ridiculous. You're old and slow. Remember, Hare, Wise Owl said, pride comes before a fall. Hare laughed, but he agreed to race Tortoise anyway. Owl set the course. It was a twisty and turny and very, very long course. Ready, set, go, said Owl. Hare bounded off. He sped around a tree stump. He hopped over a log. And he leaped across a puddle. Soon, Tortoise was just a speck in the distance. Ha! thought Hare. That'll teach him to think he's as fast as me. And a bit hungry, he decided to stop and snack on some grass. Then Hare began to feel pretty sleepy. I'll just have a quick nap, he thought. That tortoise will never catch up and Hare fell asleep. Meanwhile, Tortoise kept plodding on and on. I'm going on the course now. I'm going to go as fast as I can. 
but I can't go very fast. Soon, the end was in sight. As the sun began to set, Hare woke up startled. <gasps> the race! He gasped. He ran as fast as he could to the finish line, but Tortoise was already there. Tortoise had won the race. Slow and steady always wins, said the wise owl. And that is the moral or the lesson of this Aesop fable. Slow and steady wins the race. Hare felt ashamed of being so brash and boastful. And from that day on, he never made fun of anyone ever again. The end. I just think that's such a good story with a good moral. Anyhow, remember how before I told you that we were going to watch a video? Well, now is the time for us to send this video out to Records and Burpees Children's Zoo so that Lee can teach us all about a tortoise. Watch this. Hey everybody, today I want to talk to you about tortoises and in particular sulcata tortoises. My name is Lee and this is my friend Moses. Moses is a sulcata tortoise and they come from Africa. You know, he's not full grown yet, as huge as he is. And this type of tortoise is the world's third largest tortoise. They can get to be almost 200 pounds and he'll get to be quite a bit longer than he is right now. Let me grab my measuring, my, my yardstick. Let's see about how big he is now. His shell is about 19 inches. They can, their shell can get to be almost three feet long. So that's as long as this whole yardstick is. So he's got some growing left to do. Right now he's in his early 20s. Now these tortoise would, tortoises would live in very dry or arid areas. They live south of the Sahara Desert in Africa. They have very dry food there. So they'll eat pretty much whatever they can get. They would eat dry grasses and leaves, um, cacti, um, almost anything they can get, even thorny bushes. You see him chomping down on the, the lawn here. He'll eat all different kinds of weeds like clover and dandelions and grasses. Now there are some types of tortoises in the world that would live where they have a very different type of food. And so they might eat more fruit. This type of tortoise, they sometimes call the cows of the tortoise world because they eat mostly grass and that's what's good for them and that's what they're made for. Now tortoises, like turtles, have a big shell, but the main difference is, is tortoises move around on land. They don't swim in the water. They can't swim at all. If I were to drop him into the water, he would sink to the bottom like a big heavy rock. He is not built for swimming at all. He's just built for walking around on land. And I bet you can guess why he has this shell. This is his protection. This is very hard. And if he feels like he's in danger, he'll push his head in. He'll put these spiny legs in front of his face and in front of this soft skin here. And that would protect him from creatures that might try to eat him. Now, as he's eating, you'll notice how he's ripping that grass off. Tortoises don't have any teeth. They're just using the sharp edge of their mouth to be able to cut that off and then swallow it. They're not chewing their food. They're just biting bits of it off and swallowing it down. Now, these are amazing animals because of how long they can live as well. Nobody knows for sure, but they believe that a sulcata tortoise can live to be at least 170 years old. That's the recorded life of one. Can you imagine that? If there was a tortoise around today that had lived 170 years, they would be around before the presidency of Abraham Lincoln. Just think of the history that tortoise would have seen. So tortoises are thought to be, um, if not the longest living uh, land animal, then among them. Now, as I said, in Africa, where they would come from, 
it's very dry and very hot. They have to be suited for this environment. So one thing they'll do is they'll dig burrows down. They dig burrows and they go down in these burrows during the hottest part of the day. It's a little damper down there. It's a little cooler that keeps them cooler. And hey, buddy, <laughs> slow down. <laughs> it keeps them cooler and uh, it also keeps them in the shade. Now the sulcata tortoise is also sometimes called an African spurred tortoise and that's because he's got spurs or pointy scales on his legs. These spurred tortoises, uh, like most reptiles, lay eggs and they would lay about 15 to 30 eggs in a clutch in a group of them. Now though the female will dig holes and bury these eggs and they will sit there incubating uh, for about between 90 to 120 days. That's a long time. A chicken's uh, only about a month before its egg hatch hatches. And uh, you think that's about ooh, between three and four months that these tortoises' eggs have to, uh, have to incubate. We'll give them a little snack here. I know fruit isn't a main part of his diet, but they do like to have a treat now and then. You want some grapes? Or are you happy with that? over. I love to watch how their mouth works. Tortoises are a type of wild animal that you could keep as a pet, uh, but there are a few things you'd want to think about. First of all, any animal is a big responsibility and a wild animal is a, a special responsibility keeping it as a pet. You want to make sure you're going to be able to take care of it and you know how to take care of it properly. Also, because these tortoises can live a very long time, you're gonna to have to have a plan on who's gonna take care of that tortoise. Um, also, these animals need a lot of room. You see how big he is right now? He's gonna get much bigger. They need to have a lot of room in the summertime uh, where they can roam and get the sunshine. And in the wintertime, they're gonna need to, need to be kept warm. So if you're thinking of a tortoise as a pet, you might choose an animal that's going to stay a little bit smaller. Now keeping a tortoise as a pet also means having the proper diet. Uh, and if he's given the improper diet, it can have uh, consequences. We don't know uh, Moses' uh, full background. Uh, so he came to us looking like this. This pyramiding or these pointy parts of the shell means he likely had too much protein when he was younger, so his shell grew improperly. Well, thanks for spending some time with us today and learning a little bit about Sulcata tortoise, another one of the world's amazing animals. Until next time, this is Lee and Moses. Bye. Did you know the Galapagos tortoise can weigh up to 900 pounds? That's as much as a small horse. Can you believe how old tortoises can get? That is pretty special. Well, we saw that tortoise moving very slowly. And I thought it would be a fun activity if you and I did things slowly right now. Okay, so here's how it's going to work. I'm going to say an action word. And we're going to do that action word, but we're going to do it like a tortoise would, meaning very slowly. Are you ready to try it? Jump. Clap your hands. Jumping jacks.
I hope you had fun doing that with me. Let's go make a tortoise craft now. Well, what we're going to do right now is we're going to make a craft. So this craft that we're going to make is a turtle craft. And in order to make the craft, we're going to need a bowl. A white bowl is best, I think, because we can make it any color we want to. And then we need construction paper, scissors, crayons, and tape. We are going to make a turtle. So this is what part of the turtle, do you think? The shell, right. So we have the shell. And then we have to cut out all the different parts of the turtle, tortoise. We need to cut out a head. How many legs do we need to cut out? One, two, three, four, and then a tail, which is kind of like a triangle tail. So I want to do those cutting out first of the different parts of the turtle. I keep saying turtle, but tortoise. So it looks like the head is bigger than the legs. So we're going to make, cut out a big head. All right. Ooh, I think that'll be a good one. Okay, so that's the head. And then we need four legs. Now, so I wanted them all to be the same size, so I'm folding it over. So all I have to do is cut it once, and it's going to cut out four different legs. Okay, this looks good. Yep. Excellent. Let's just make sure there's four. One, two, three, four. Good. And then we need a tail. Do you remember what shape the tra tail was? Triangle. Okay. So let's make a triangle tail. Okay. So we need to put these onto the shell. Now you can use anything you want to, like glue if you'd like, but I prefer tape because I'll show you why in a minute. So you can flip over the bowl, see how the inside looks like that? You never know how the inside of a shell looks like, right? Because we only see the outside of a turtle shell. So maybe turtle shells look like this inside. I just don't know. I'm going to pretend it does. So we'll tape this down here. And we'll tape another one. And I'll show you in a minute how tape works really well. Good. And then we need the head. Oops. And then we need doo -doo -doo -doo, the tail. If we over like that, you can see we have our turtle. Now, what's cool about using tape is you could make the turtle, you know how turtles get scared sometimes and they use their shell to protect themselves? So you could actually fold your whole turtle inside the shell to protect it. And that's why I like to use tape instead of glue because glue makes that a lot harder to do. But we're not scared right now, turtles. So we're going to come on out and we have our crayons. So I'm going to draw some eyes. Maybe a smile. There we go. It's a happy turtle. And then we have the shell. Now you could do whatever you want to with your shell. You could color it green if you want to. You could also color it all different rainbow colors if you want. So put a little blue on it. I'm going to make a nice colorful shell here. Oh, yes. Anyhow, I hope you decide to make this craft, too. It's lots of fun. Well, I'm going to be doing this for a while, so I'll say goodbye to you now. And I hope to see you next week for week three of the Zoo and You Storytime. Goodbye.